So we all have a, a, an internal compass and mm -hmm. I call this intuition and intuition is the language of our higher self. So most of us don't realize that we have multiple aspects. We have one aspect of us, which we would call our, our ego or our identity. It is who you believe that you are in this life with all of the memories and experiences and character traits that you've developed thus far. But then there's a, a, a non-physical, but even more difficult <laughs> aspect of you to put your finger on. And mm -hmm. it is the part of you that is hearing your thoughts and this part of you is constantly trying to guide us into alignment into alignment meaning um really the person that we are called to be who our soul wants us to be that unique expression of divinity is how i like to say it mm -hmm. and it's through the language of intuition that we can hear that. You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing Black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted Black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall. Welcome back. So in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to have this intrinsic ability to see what doesn't exist. You see a problem and you create a solution. However, there is an important piece missing for many, consciousness. So let's break it down and start by defining consciousness. There are many definitions, but for the purposes of today's episode, the one that sticks out the most is awareness of one's own existence, sensations, thoughts, surrounding, etc. Another important definition is alignment, which is to be in or come into precise adjustment or correct relative position. Now, I'm giving you these definitions because they are important for today's discussion, where we're talking all about alignment and getting in touch with the non-physical aspects of ourselves to reach the full financial potential in our business. And we have the pleasure of being joined by Makozi Najir, known as the Royal Shaman. She's the world leading African shaman specializing in energetic alignment and human potential mentoring high performance individuals to create powerful transformations, amplifying their wealth and impact. Called a spiritual guide for empire builders, she turns entrepreneurs into conscious leaders. And today we're discussing the power of energetic alignment in business and how to use your inner voice and intuition to guide you into creating the impact you're meant to make. Makozi will connect the dots on how your spiritual and emotional components of being are creating your physical reality and how this all impacts your business. So understanding all of this is what's going to allow you to experience endless expansion in your business. So let's get into it. Makosi, welcome to the Black to Business Podcast. I'm truly excited about today's conversation and I want to wish you a warm welcome. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Monique. I'm so excited to get to talk with you today and dive deep into some really fun topics. Yes. So before we dive in, I really want to, um, I'd just like to share with my audience a little bit about who we're speaking with. So if you could share briefly about who you are, what is it that you do in your business and kind of how you got where you are today? Sure. I will do my best to try and give you the cliff notes version of that. <laughs> but um, in this present iteration of myself, I work with incredible disruptive visionaries, helping them to step into their highest calling and really create a euphoric empire and leave the impact that they're here to make. And I do that through energetic alignment. Um, that's pretty much what I'm known for. And uh, I came into this work, it's really been an unfolding over my lifetime. Um, I say I really started out having almost three lives as a, as a kid, teenager. Um, I grew up 
mixed race. My mom was a single teen mom and I, I grew up in small town, Southern West Virginia, where I was not introduced to a lot of uh, spiritual concepts. I grew mm-hmm. up in the church. Um, however, I always had a spiritual gifting of sorts, but I kept it very hidden. But I had an experience um, when I was 15 when my best friend was murdered and I, and I saw her after she passed away. And at that moment, mm-hmm. I realized that I was not just imagining <laughs> my right. spiritual gifting up until that point. Um, so anyway, I, in order to get out of my situation, like so many um people that I come across do, I was very, uh, almost, you could say I was a high achiever. I was type A. My entire uh, energy was focused on, I have to go to college. I have to get the best grades. You know, I have to perform so that I can get out of this situation. So I ended up going to college and I got two degrees in business and also uh, was preparing myself for med school. Cause I was like, if I don't get in med school, I'll fall back on business. Right. And um, it was really after having my son that I realized that really all of that entire pursuit was really for uh, external validation. I wanted doctor in front of my name mm-hmm. just so I could like prove the haters wrong and I could beat the statistics. Mm-hmm. Right. But I realized I was like, this is, I'm literally rebelling against uh, basically like an imaginary enemy. Like statistics don't care about me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> it was major. So uh, I had my son and I ended up working at Target as a manager. So here I am, magna cum laude, multiple degrees. So I was working at Target and then ultimately decided um, to go into direct sales. That was really motivated by this um, intuitive desire to want to be home with my son as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But once I got in into direct sales, I soared to the top of that company in a really short amount of time, literally Mm -hmm. in nine months. And if anyone's familiar with direct sales, um, then you know when you are in the top of these companies, so few people get to the top of the companies that you get treated really well. So I'm walking on stages, I'm you know winning free trips and flying all over the country, and um, you know designer handbags and cash bonuses, and mm-hmm. ultimately it looked like I had the American dream, or I, I had the picture perfect status quo success. I had you know the husband, the the child the home, the car, the, (laughs) the success. And I kept asking this question, like, wait, is this all that there is? Like, is this it? Because here I was in my early twenties having quote unquote achieved it. Right. And Mm -hmm. after that point, I'm like, well, what, what do I do next? So I started asking God or source Uh, whatever language that you use to denote a higher power. Mm -hmm. I started asking the question, what am I like, what am I really here for? And more importantly, I started asking, well, who am I actually? Mm. And when I started asking that um, some really amazing synchronicities started happening in my life. And I simply started following those breadcrumbs. I started following the signs. And that ultimately led to my spiritual journey, which um, really was about five years of the initiation process, which I'm sure we can talk more about. Mm -hmm. Um, And then coming out on the other side, um, an initiated shaman. And that leads me to, you know, the work that I do today. I am so excited because I know that, you know, a lot of people can so totally relate to your story and then they're still in that space. So I'm so excited today that we get to talk about, you know, making sure that you just be and connect with your highest self to live that life and make that revenue that you want to make. So love that you shared that. 
And I guess just to dive in a little further, um, just to dive in a little further, you mentioned the initiation as a, a shaman. If you could just describe, like, explain what a shaman is and start there. Let's start there. Yeah, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what a shaman is amongst people that even think that they know. Um, but a lot of people have no knowledge at all. Um, mm -hmm. A shaman is a specific kind of traditional healer. And when I'm saying traditional, I mean like um, in, a, in an indigenous or an ancient spiritual system. And ultimately, the, the key differentiating factor is that we can access altered states of consciousness at will, aka uh, the, through the use of trance. We also, through that, um, through that modality, gain knowledge about the unseen realm, the spiritual, emotional components that are actually creating this physical reality. And so I always knew as a kid that there was, there, there was something, there was a higher intelligence that seemed mm -hmm. to be orchestrating certain events, right? And certain, um, the, the order of the, this material reality. And mm -hmm. it was when I went through the process and realized, oh, there's a, a gift here or a, you know, a way of being that can actually access these unseen realms, which sounds super woo woo, but everyone has had experiences of the non-physical. Wow. Okay. Yes, I love it. Because, all right, before my next question, I have to ask, you mentioned that your background was in, you also went to school for a business degree if med school didn't work. And you also work with uh, being a spiritual guide for empire builders. Builders. And so I want to talk about how you were able to use your background and um, this industry to really approach business and decide how you were going to approach business and how you were going to approach and help those empire builders. So I cannot say that I knew I, I had zero intention when I set out on my spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. It really was a journey of self-discovery for myself. I had no attachment to doing any kind of, I never, honestly, I never would have imagined that this would be my life, honestly. Um, really? It really, it really happened very organically because I started to speak to some of the bigger issues in humanity and because of my own business background, not just in my education, but I had worked in a variety of roles in business, in marketing, in sales, in management. Mm -hmm. And I really started to see that in my perspective, business is going to be the, the leaders of where we're headed in our human evolution. I can see, and I think anyone with eyes can notice that our um, our political leadership is crumbling, and a lot of the other systems and structures that have been in place are falling apart. Mainly because people are just um, really abandoning uh, some of medical system, educational system, yeah. on and on and on. Right, and by by intrinsic nature, entrepreneurs have an ability to vision, to see what doesn't exist yet and bring that into fruition. And so I realized that the piece that was missing was, uh, you could say, consciousness in business. We have a lot of uh, unconsciousness in, in business, right? Yep. There's... Uh, a, uh, an entire system that's like, you know, greed <laughs> for profit, right? Um, yeah. But I see a different way. And I work with clients who, you know, really desire to 
leave this world better than they found it and mm-hmm. desire to create a legacy and, and want to have businesses where it's a win, 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 where they win, their employees win and their clients win. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, that, oh, somebody has got to lose in order for us to win. And so that is the game that I like to play. Mm hmm. And I love that you said that it was organic for you, because I think that when you speak and when you spoke about your spiritual journey, it just seems like you were able to really define. And like you said, you begin to ask those questions. Who am I really? And I love that you said as entrepreneurs and business owners, we are the visionaries. So it's important for us to first understand what you said. Who am I really so that I can show up the best for my business? Um, and today's conversation is all about connecting with your highest self. So I first want to ask about um, <clears throat> what would you say makes someone or allows someone to connect with their highest self? And how do they make sure that they are on the road to doing that? So we all have a, a, an internal compass and mm-hmm. I call this intuition. And intuition is the language of our higher self. So most of us don't realize that we have multiple aspects. We have one aspect of us, which we would call our our ego or our identity. It is who you believe that you are in this life with all of the memories and experiences and character traits that you've developed thus far. But then there's... uh, a a non-physical, but even more difficult (laughs) aspect of you to put your finger on. And Mm -hmm. it is the part of you that is hearing your thoughts. And this part of you is constantly trying to guide us into alignment, into alignment, meaning um, really the person that we are called to be, who our soul wants us to be. That unique expression of divinity is how I like to say it. Mm -hmm. And it's through the language of intuition that we can hear that. So I think all of us have had an experience of of like a gut instinct, right? That is one way that our intuition speaks to us. And most people, because we are indoctrinated from a very young age to be very in our heads, um, Mm -hmm. be very logical, analytical, you know, think, so on and so forth. We will try to use that aspect of us and override our intuition because our intuition is very quiet. Um, It's very quiet. It's very subtle. It doesn't have a lot of urgency. And sometimes it doesn't make any sense, right? Like your intuition tells you, to quit your job and you're like, but uh, I have bills to pay, mouths to feed, so on and so forth, right? And so we can get very out of alignment because we keep suffocating our intuition, getting out out of touch with that inner voice. But that inner voice is what is gonna guide us into not only the impact that we're here to make, but also the abundance that's aligned for us in this lifetime. So it makes me think about um, people understanding how to just be. So how would you say, how could you say that people can train themselves to just be, whether it be present or just be in alignment? Yeah, it's uh, an interesting thing because a a lot of people get really terrified when they hear this concept of, I I should just be, because most of us associate our identity and our worth with what we do, not with who we are. And the difference is that who we are is really the, um, it's like the accumulation of the characteristics that make up our identity. It's how we see ourselves. So when we say, um, you know, that you need to just be, that doesn't mean that you're never going to do anything, 
But what it does mean is that the actions that you take arise uh, from a more natural, um, inspired place because they're a natural extension of who you are. So for example, if I go right now and, uh, I don't know, try to build a, a rocket ship, it's going to be mm-hmm. really difficult for me to build a rocket ship. It's going to take so much energy. It's going to be yes. um, probably take me a very long time because I don't have the identity of someone who sees themselves as a rocket scientist, right? So in business specifically, this can be really valuable because most people, when they become an entrepreneur, they don't do the process of unpacking, releasing, deconditioning all of the ways of being that they accumulated that really is uh, an employee mindset, right? Is mm-hmm. like an employee state of being versus being actually being an entrepreneur. We think often just if I have a business that makes me an entrepreneur, it doesn't. An entrepreneur has an entirely different way of being, way of seeing the world, and uh, way of taking action because of that identity. Mm. That is so true because I know a lot of people speak about that employee mindset and how that hinders their growth in business because they're still stuck in that mindset. And I love that you said that. Again, being and stepping into that visionary role is so important. And Makosi, you spoke about earlier the importance of consciousness. And I want to put two and two together and say, okay, what role would you say consciousness plays in one's ability to reach their highest self, but also the impact of this on their ability to be successful in their businesses? So I can't, I know that there's a lot of uh, other spiritual teachers and people in like the spiritual business space who say, um, that you cannot be successful unless you are aligned. And I actually think that that's crap because I see a mm. ton of people actually who have achieved a level of success who are completely unconscious, who, who are not mm-hmm. aligned, right? That's a reality. However, what I desire to see in the world, what I desire to experience and what um, the people who tend to be attracted in, in, and enter into my world, they really desire to have depth, mm. meaning, right? That, um, that feeling of fulfillment. So if you just want to get success, there's lots and lots of ways to create success. But what I find, especially with the people I end up working with, Mm -hmm. um, they get to this high level of success. You know, some of them, seven, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs, and then they realize, oh, this is completely empty because this actually is not me. I've, I was so um, unaware that I was building something from a place of fear or from a place of lack or trying to get somebody's approval that, you know, prove that I'm worthy. And when they get the success, it's, it, it's hollow. Mm-hmm. And on the extreme side, we see this in um, especially like entertainers. I think of Robin Williams as one of the, uh, one of like the poster children for this mm-hmm. because he created a, level of success that was really a distorted version. And then he found himself having to keep trying to uphold this image that wasn't true to his authentic self. Right. Mm. And so that's where consciousness and awareness comes into play because without it, you are going to subconsciously like not even having awareness, you will create something that is really for someone else and not for you. The biggest tragedy in that though, is how that affects everyone else. Because I Mm -hmm. believe 
that our creator, however you choose to look at our creator, has us here on this plane for a, to be a unique expression, to be unique. And when we try to be what others want us to be or who we think we have to be in order to be loved, accepted, successful, instead of being our authentic self, we don't leave the impact that only we can leave on this planet. Mm, That is so true. I felt that because I always think about uh, people often say, We had Jordan Guyton on the podcast uh, a while ago recently, and she spoke about how someone else's breakthrough is sitting in your drafts folder. So it's like they're waiting on you. They're waiting for you. That person needs you. So to say that people are not showing up as them full selves, it ends up kind of hurting, like you said, the people that need them. I think about like Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Um, I love Beyonce. (laughs) (laughs) But... I love Beyonce. No, not not a but. Oh, not a but. Not a but. Okay. Not a but at all. Because I think about um, if anyone pays any attention, I I, I pay attention to how um, the energy that people show up with, mm-hmm. and um, Beyonce is one of the only artists who she does not interact with people on Instagram. Mm-hmm. She doesn't do a lot of interviews. She doesn't take a lot of input from people outside of herself, mm-hmm. and she doesn't make music thinking like, oh, what is, what's just going to be the hottest thing, right? Right. He makes music that is in alignment with who she is at the moment that she's creating it. It's really for her, first and foremost. And because she makes her art for her, we all get to benefit. And that's like the magic of Mm. Beyonce, right? And we all have that capability. Yep. So true. Like you said, you were, it happened organically for you because you were on your own journey and people were attracted to that process and just getting connected to you because of what you were able to do for yourself. Makes sense. Light bulb moment there. Mm. And one of the things you mentioned uh, just a second ago was that energy and going deeper into the power of alignment. We talk about um, one of the things you mentioned initially is the ability for you to help people know the importance of that energetic alignment. Can you just expound on what an energetic alignment is and the importance of energy? Yeah. So we all have, um, so this actually goes back to tying to intuition and really getting in touch with this non-physical aspect of ourselves. Um, if you look, there are activities that you do that give you energy and there are activities that you do that take the energy away, right? So for example, you and I are sitting here having this conversation podcasting, right? Doing a a, interview. And both of us have, we're probably going to walk away from this feeling really energized. And that's a sign that this is something that is in alignment for you. This is a way that divinity is trying to express into this world through you. But when we spend a lot of time doing the things that are draining to our energy, right? We find ourselves in misalignment. And this can be really difficult for people because we are taught to really um, glorify our traits, the things that we had to work hard for, Mm -hmm. right? Like I was going to med school (laughs) because I worked really hard to get good in science, right? Yeah. And it was a challenge. And there was like, a, there was ego pride in that. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I was downplaying and under underestimating and undermining the value of the 
traits that were just innate to me. Yeah. That's really the the thing about genius is your genius will sometimes be so difficult for you to see because it's just so natural to you. You think everybody else is like that, right? You just mm. think, oh, well, this just must be normal for everybody because it's so normal to you. So energy is important because how we do a thing affects how that that thing actually comes into fruition. Mm -hmm. um, I can give you a really great example of this. Um, if you do a, an Instagram video and you're doing it because uh, Gary Vaynerchuk told you that <laughs> in order to be successful, you need to be doing live videos. Mm -hmm. However, that is not in alignment with you, right? Mm. The energy that everyone else will read off of that is that you don't want to be there <laughs> and it will not get a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if it does get traction, you will have to force it. You will have to like force yourself to be consistent. You will have to probably put a ton of money behind those videos to get them seen, right? Versus mm -hmm. honing in on what are what are the key activities that when you do them, you feel lit up. You feel alive when you do those things. Mm -hmm. And being empowered to say no to the things that are not in alignment for you. Like I don't write. I don't write my captions because that's not my gift. My gift is speaking, mm. right? And the more that we say no to what drains us, drains us of our energy, the more energy we have to create in the world. That's so good. And I also heard you speak about in our interview. Um, no, I think I saw on your social, you were speaking about um, burnout being the result of misalignment. And just even touching on that is like everything you just discussed, but people understanding how misalignment leads to burnout, because like you said, the more stuff you're saying no to that aren't in alignment allows you to have that energy to do those things that you really want to do. Right. Yeah. So burnout, you know, there's a, so many people who come to me and mm -hmm. their primary reason for that is that they're experiencing burnout, but burnout because comes as a result of misalignment because let's say that you have um, you have a set amount of energy each day. You don't, but let's just say that you do. And you, it, let's say it's like 10 units and you spend that 10 units in an area that doesn't actually give you more energy. The end result of that is that you will eventually crash and burn. Mm -hmm. But when we spend our our units of energy, I'm just trying to give it some like a little bit of tangibility to it. Mm -hmm. When we spend our energy in ways that actually give us more energy, we find that we, it's almost like you could go forever and ever and ever. Um, the mm -hmm. scientists will call this like accessing flow state, Right. We've all had those moments where we were in such a flow. It almost seemed like time stopped existing. Either mm -hmm. time slowed down or time sped up. We start to lose sense of time. We also, in those periods of time, are able to do more with less energy and less time. And it feels really good. So you want to do it again and again and again, right? That, to me is the ideal state. And I believe that that's our natural state actually is to be in flow most of the time. Mm -hmm. But we get in burnout because we say we're in a culture that glorifies us when we say yes to the things that we don't want to do. When we people please do everything to just, you know, make other people happy. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have a difficult time saying no. And that's the kiss of death 
for an entrepreneur or a visionary. It's also a block to abundance as well. Mm. So it makes me think about, well, what if a person is listening and they're saying, I don't know if I like to do this or not. Let me test it out. Is there a phase where you're testing and you're like, I don't want to do this because I just don't want to do it or I don't want to do this because it's not in alignment with who I am. So how do you decide? Decipher. Yeah. So most people that uh, I come across really do need, um, it's almost like a detox Mm -hmm. period. Because if you've been on the hamster wheel, if you've been pushing and forcing and going for so long and you have not had any rest or space really in a long time. Yeah. Then the prescription is that you need space because it's in the space that we're able to hear and feel. It's really a, a, a body communication. We're able to feel if I genuinely don't want to do this or if I'm just like exhausted because I'm always hustling. Mm hmm. So yes, you need to test, Mm -hmm. right? I I feel like I'm constantly in a, um, in a testing phase and paying attention to where my energy is and noticing when it shifts because alignment isn't something that you get into and then you just have it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Your soul is always going to be looking for new experiences, new ways to expand, right? And so it's cultivating that relationship with that part of yourself so that you can stay in alignment. And when you get out of it, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. You will immediately be able to feel like, oh, whoop, wrong direction. Right. (laughs) But yeah, you do need a period of time to test it. Yes. I love that. This doesn't feel good. So I love that, that we're getting to how do you get in alignment? I love it. And so for entrepreneurship, business, it's always you hear people talk about you have to always be evolving. But for many people, uh, understanding that in order to reach their next level is going to require evolution and it's also sometimes going to require a different version of yourself. Can you speak to uh, evolution and evolving one's identity for the ego and touching on the euphoric evolution. Yeah. So yes, we do always need to be evolving, but sometimes we, um, we think that evolving means that we need to do more Mm -hmm. or we need to become more, which kind of gives us the idea that we're never enough, right? Like there's always something I need to fix. Um, I always need to be more, I need to work harder, I need to be smarter, so on and so forth. And that by itself is is setting you up for failure because it's coming from lack. It's coming from not enoughness. Um, so what I actually see and what I work with my clients is, is that most of the time evolution happens through letting go of a way of being, right? Mm. So I used the example earlier um, about people pleasing, right? Yeah. And especially when you get to um, higher and higher levels of, of success in business, what's so important is that these ways of being that may have served you in the past that, you know, might have got you to this place will actually prevent you from your next evolution, right? So if you just, Mm -hmm. let's take, um, you know, someone who is speaking on stages or um, interviews, right? If they are holding on to a version of themselves that people pleases and says yes to everyone that asks, well, there's only so many hours in a day and there's only so much energy that they have. So if they can't learn to say no, and if they can't let go of that version of themselves, they will forever plateau, right? They can't, you can only do so many interviews, right? Right. So that's why it requires stepping into, and I I call this euphoric evolution because it is really a process of 
putting your putting your pulse on what, what the environment, what the context, what the timing for you is and which aspects of yourself are going to be required for that next level. And I say it that way it, because these are, all of us have access to all of the qualities. Every human possibility, we all have the capability of accessing. Mm-hmm. You know, what was, what was it Shaka Khan? I'm every woman, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's everyone. all in me, right? We mm. we all have access to all the ways of being. Yeah. So it's not becoming something else. It's embracing various aspects of your characteristics that are in you. You just have to find them and feel into them. So some people may realize this. They may realize in this conversation, this is me. But what can you say to that person that's still struggling with, I know what I need to do. I know who I need to become, or I know it's all in me, but I'm still not going to do it. What would you say to that person? Well, I mean, you never have to do anything, but you know, this is a, a reality where we have we have to deal with the consequences of mm-hmm. whatever decisions that we make, whether positive or negative, right? And so what I find that most people who are at this place, it's fear that stops mm-hmm. them from mm-hmm. taking the next step, right? Because um, our ego aspect of us feels like, well, you know, where I am right now might suck and I might hate it. And I know that there's more for me out there, but at least I know, right? There's some, there's a feeling of safety in what's known and there's fear about what's unknown, right? Because you can mm-hmm. think like, oh, but, but what if I fail or what if I'm not successful in it? Or what if everybody looks at me like I'm crazy because I became a shaman? Um, <laughs> personal. Right. Experience. <laughs> um, it's usually fear that stops us. Mm-hmm. And the I, I can't say that the fear will just go away. But what I do view fear as is as long as there actually is not any danger, because, you know, sometimes there is, you know, a lion around the corner. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> um, but oftentimes, uh, and in my work, I truly believe that growth happens where we're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if we're, if we're not embracing and getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, um, then we are essentially staying the same, which in energetics actually means you're dying. You're not, there is no just like maintaining because this universe is always changing, right? The Mm -hmm. only two things I can promise you are that things are changing and that things are dying, Mm. right? Like we live and die and things always change. Right. So if you are not open and willing to evolve with them, you're dying. And there's that. You know what they say when people, because it is that fear of what people will think. But I think those cliche statements make more sense as you get older and you, you know, growth is like people will talk about you, whether you're doing good or you're doing bad. So you might as well do what you want. Yeah. I mean, and you know, this sounds really morbid um, in my, in my new book that will be coming out next year. Um, I, I talk about, yes. And it's called Euphoric Evolution, by the way, just a little, it. little drop there. Um, yes. One of the things that I talk about is the five regrets of the dying. Um, I didn't mm. say it before, but I had a near death experience um, with postpartum uh, preeclampsia after I had my son and mm. spent five days in the hospital. And uh, it was actually spirit that saved my life. I, Mm. I was woken up by a voice telling me to get up, get dressed, go to the hospital. And 
having that experience, I actually started um, to explore death, which sounds so dark. Um, Mm. (laughs) But it's been a really beautiful gift because I realized that um, we never know when our time is coming. Right. We, we never know. And I imagine if I could potentially be on my deathbed tomorrow, would I look back at this moment, at the decisions I'm making and who I was choosing to be? Would I look back on that with, with, with pride in myself or with regret? It's true. That's so true. I love to see those state, those um, videos where people who are, you know, unfortunately dying, but they also express like what they wish they would have done or just like some advice for people. Uh, so I think it's, I don't think it's weird. I think it's the reality. <laughs> like, like we're all dying. So yes, um, <laughs> we're, like that's going to happen at some point, but right in the five regrets of the dying, what's beautiful about that is most people's regrets all boil down to one core theme And that core theme has to do with giving themselves permission to be their authentic self. Mm. So that's why I feel like the work that I do is the most important work that anyone can do. Mm -hmm. And so what do you, let's talk about the money aspect of it because we touched on it um, initially a little bit. If you are in alignment and you're walking in your purpose, we talk about all the benefits. I want to talk about the impact that that misalignment and people not reaching their full profit potential, especially entrepreneurs and those business owners that you work with. Why do you feel that? Well, I would say in what ways does this or how can this impact their ability to reach their full financial potential? And what do you see most often? Yeah, I love this question because I love talking about all the taboo things. Money, Mm -hmm. death. I mean, let's talk about all of them. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So one of the uh, really interesting, um, there's a book that I read um, called Blue Ocean, right? Mm -hmm. It's, It's a business book. It's really about marketing. And the concept of Blue Ocean is that you have a product or a service that is so unique that you have a blue, what's called a blue ocean, meaning you don't have any competition. You are the only one. So Mm -hmm. for the right person, you are the only option, which is the place where you can charge accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. You can easily get referrals and on and on and on, right? Well, all of that starts with you allowing yourself to be your unique, authentic self, right? When we try to be cookie cutter versions of who we think we have to be to be successful Mm -hmm. and follow cookie cutter, you know, strategies and tactics, we uh, end up a second rate copy of someone else. No one wants the bootleg version. Everyone (laughs) wants the original. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that is where the greatest potential financially lies. You're going to have more energy for what it is that you're doing, but also we, most of us have been programmed to believe that we need to be the best. We need to be the best at what we do. We need to be, you know, the best in our market and just all around be the best. Mm -hmm. Actually, no one truly cares about who's the best. We value what's unique. Mm. Right? Like, do we care who the best Beyonce impersonator is? Are we buying their album? No, we (laughs) are buying the original. We want the Beyonce, right? And so that's where that alignment piece comes in because we don't have to get too woo, um, but that's when you become magnetic. Mm -hmm. 
for specific people. I mean, they're, you know, I am not for most people, mm-hmm. <laughs> like 99.9% of people are like, who is this crazy person? <laughs> what is she even talking about? Right. But I was intrigued. I would say I was intrigued. I was like, oh, I like <laughs> the snake. Oh, hmm. but for the right person. Yes. I'm the only option. Right. Because there's only one me. And there's only one you. See, somebody is getting their breakthrough through this conversation. And I just really want to talk about what you are doing to help people unlock that euphoric empire and experience endless expansion. So let's talk about some of the ways that you are doing that and helping disruptive leaders and just discuss your offerings and your process. Sure. Um, So in the process, first starting um, working with clients one-on-one, I ended up seeing um, a lot of patterns among visionaries and really ultimately creating the euphoric evolution process, which is a, it's really a process for personal growth and self-discovery. And it really is a process that has no limitation because you have no limitation. And there are always um, opportunities for you to embrace more of yourself, for you to um, challenge yourself and expand. So these days, um, I mainly work with clients um, in a group setting. And I also have a team of um, coaches who I've trained in the euphoric evolution uh, methodology. And Mm -hmm. I support uh, these incredible cutting edge leaders in all realms of business. I'm talking everything from, you know, social media for celebrities to um, fitness to like every area of business. It really doesn't matter. The core is the same. If you understand that as the visionary, you are the greatest asset to your business. So when you are operating in your highest self, you expand the possibilities, not just for yourself, but for your team, your clients, and your audience if you have a, you know, if you have a following of, of some sort. So we do that at this moment in two different containers. One is for seven and eight figure entrepreneurs. And then uh, we have another container for more up and coming entrepreneurs who are, you know, really making that transition and stepping into that version um, of themselves. Mm, I love that. And I I would love to know your thoughts on why working with someone like you is, you know, beneficial to entrepreneurs as opposed to just trying to figure it out on their own. It's, you know, people ask me all the time, like, can I do this on my own? And Mm -hmm. I, I hesitate to say it, but I really don't believe that it's completely possible to do it on your own because we can't see ourselves. Mm. We, we can't see ourselves. And so we are meant to be interconnected and to have uh, support from each other. The other piece as well that, that I found is the more successful that you become in business, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the fewer people will tell you the truth. Mm. And my gift is I'm a truth teller. So <laughs> that's it. what we do. Um, in my containers, we talk about and um, and unpack some of the more uncomfortable things and challenge and catalyze people into growth. I don't, um, yeah, I don't believe in just like saying and doing what makes someone feel good or like feel like they're doing something. Um, right. When it's very obvious that uh, there's this opportunity for growth. And that's not helping, you know, that wouldn't be helping people if, you know, and that's what most people need. 
Well, that's what everybody needs, honestly. Yes. Uh, someone to just really tell them. And like you said, we don't see ourselves. So I love that. I really love that you said that. And um, being that you focus on showing disruptive visionaries how they can make more money and flow in alignment and um, establishing a life beyond success and one that is encompassed by legacy, freedom, fulfillment. What are some of the transformational stories that you've witnessed with your clients? So I love this question so much because, <laughs> you know, we've had some clients have a, hit amazing um, financial uh, goals, for example, mm-hmm. you know, one who went from six hundred thousand dollar launches to one point two, one point eight, two point two million dollar launches. Um, wow, that sort of thing happens. But we've also we also get really cool ones, and that's why I talk about you know beyond success because most people are taught, oh, you you need to think bigger, right? And so they're like, oh, I need to add a zero. Right. Or maybe Mm -hmm. the house needs to be bigger on my vision board or whatever. What I'm talking about is an entirely different realm of possibility that your mind can't even come up with a goal for. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we recently had a client who, through this work, ended up at a private dinner with the Queen of Norway. What? Yes. Now... It wow. all started. Now, that sounds like what in the world? This was not a goal. Wasn't uh-huh. even in her thought that this could be a possibility. It's not a thing she could think to want. But what happened was she had this intuitive nudge to um, speak to her audience about supporting her husband. Mm-hmm. And for her, uh, she had to unpack a lot of um, conditioning around what it means to um, be a woman and, and speak for what you want mm-hmm. and actually be a catalyst as a woman, because mainly as women, we're taught, you know, that we need to be quiet and we need to be amenable and we need to you know ask nicely and all that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but she just started speaking what she wanted people to do and they supported her. They just started doing it. And ultimately, her husband ended up winning this incredible award as a result of her following that intuitive nudge and us helping her through the fear of doing it. Um, And then because of this award, they were invited to this private dinner uh, with the Queen of Norway. Wow. And imagine, and imagine if you wouldn't have like even, you know, because some people are even scared to share like these thoughts that are in their head. Like, oh, it sounds, you know, no one will believe me or no one will encourage me to go after this. And sometimes it's like getting that out and you've been able to work with her to get to that space. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, those sorts of things like I, you know, I had another client who at 24 years old, we were able to support her in growing her business to a place where she retired her husband at 24 years old. (laughs) She was like, I couldn't even like in her mind, that's not even something that she would have thought was possible yet here they are. I have another client who is looking at buying a a $2 million uh, property. She's like, I have no money for this, but Mm -hmm. all of the opportunities and everything is lining up for it to happen. And that's the realm that I love to play in because, you know, really seemingly miraculous things start happening Mm -hmm. in that realm. Somebody's listening. They're like, sign me up. So where do they sign up? <laughs> <laughs> so the easiest way to get in touch with us um, is on uh, my website, the Royal Um, or you can visit me on Instagram at the Royal Shaman. And um, one of my team members can ask you some questions and see if it might be a good fit for you to work with us. Mm. Makosi, this has been amazing. And I want to ask you, how do you stay in alignment with who you are and your grand vision and your grand purpose? Mm. Um, For me, it really is, it all boils down to the cultivation of love for myself. Mm. And that sounds super conceited. I don't care. Uh, Because (laughs) I believe that all of us really should love ourselves and take time 
to build and maintain a beautiful relationship with self. So I spend a ton of time um, on self-care. I get, I'm at the spa. I'm a VIP at my spa. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Love there. it. Um, I spend a lot of time um, exploring fashion, style, um, very into music and, um, and dance is also um, another way, specifically belly dance is another mm. way that um, I stay connected and stay in my body and out of my head. Mm, I love it. And when you reach this moment in your life where you saw and you understood who you were and who you were to be, what did it start to look like for you? Like, how did you sort of like transition or step into this? Like, what did that process look like for you? Mm, well, I have to start actually with what it felt like because it mm-hmm. felt like it had a feeling before mm-hmm. it actually manifested and it felt like freedom. So most of us think like, oh, if once I have success, then I will have freedom, right? Like once I have money, then I can have freedom. And then we think, oh, when I have time, then I can, then I can have the freedom. But it actually felt like this is, it, freedom is about being free to be myself. Right. And ultimately that started looking like um, doing things like number one, going into initiation was a whole thing uh, mm-hmm. with my family um, and and friends. And, you know, I also did it kind of publicly. Um, I was sharing on Facebook what I was learning and all the places I was going. I, I was traveling to and from Africa quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And um, then it started really shifting my my reality it started first with my relationship with my husband. Um, mm-hmm. and it proved, I, I feel like we're closer than ever. And okay. then with my son, really being able to under, to understand myself gave me the tools that I needed to interact with him and allow him to be himself, giving mm-hmm. him like much more unconditional love than trying to make him be what I wanted him to be. Um, And then of course, you know, the financial success started coming because of it. You know, this business, I grew from zero to a million dollars in three years. And yeah, uh, that's very, you know, it's still blows my mind because Mm -hmm. less than 2% of women uh, ever cross seven figures, let alone, you know, uh, woman of color and Mm -hmm. I'm 45, right? Like, (laughs) and I'm a mom. So that, uh, that has been amazing. And one of the other things that has been just like, it just really lights me up is the ability to, um, create opportunities. You know, I started on this spiritual journey, um, because I wasn't satisfied with the status quo and I, I wanted to live fully and live freely. And I wish that someone would have been able to give me an opportunity the way that I'm able to give others opportunity. So I have a team of 10 now. um, Wow. And they, you know, they all have the ability to be quite flexible and make good money and, you know, live, you know, travel and they do all sorts of amazing things. And uh, I, I'm so grateful to be able to, to do that. I don't take that responsibility lightly at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. And it makes me think about that listener who's in their first two years of business. Like, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? My advice is to enjoy the process if you're not enjoying the process, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Period. Um, because we, I, that's not to say, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Entrepreneurship is always going to have ups and downs. Like mm-hmm. it's a roller coaster. It comes with the territory. That's part of it. But if you find that you are constantly miserable and you are thinking like, oh, but when I hit, when I hit that million dollar business, Mm-hmm. Then I'll be able to do what I want, or then I'll be able to, you know, pursue this. Da 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 da. You're doing it wrong. It's when you allow yourself to 
pursue and be in alignment with what lights you up in the journey, in the process, that the result becomes a natural byproduct. It's, it's so natural and obvious and you don't have to force and fight. Mm -hmm. it. It, it. It's just a matter of time and you're not so focused on it because you're enjoying the process, whether it takes you two years, five years, 10 years, it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. you're loving it. Such great advice. And you mentioned um, just managing a team of 10 and just the success that you've reached. Um, I want to ask you, like, what are your favorite tools and resources that have helped you along the journey? Ooh, so many. Um, <laughs> one of them that I feel like every entrepreneur needs to have is the Stay Focused app. Mm. At this point, I feel like they need to give me a sponsorship or something because I talk <laughs> about it all the time. But um, it's really easy to get sucked into working all the time. And the Stay Focused app allows you to block certain apps like Instagram or your or your email or, you know, your project management software. It allows you to block them uh, mm -hmm. so that you can actually go and enjoy your life, which was the reason why you got into entrepreneurship. <laughs> to right. Begin with, right. Um, that I also um, am a big proponent of utilizing uh, frequency. So I use the brain.fm app mm -hmm. and um, it, there's specific um, music and frequencies in there that will help you to um, activate creative flow so that you can actually be even more productive when you're doing your work. Um, and then the third would be simplicity. Um, simplicity is not an app mm. <laughs> and it is not a, you know, it's not something that you go out there and get, but just understanding that our tendency is to make things more complicated than they need to be. Yes. And my business is super simple. If it's mm -hmm. not simple, I don't do it. That's why I only have two offers. <laughs> yes. And um, our day-to-day -day, uh, processes are stupidly simple. Mm. It's when you do things simply that you can focus energy on refinement and improving those simple things instead of constantly adding more things, which ends up taking more energy away from you. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And I think that that allows that creativity also and just like, keep it simple. I love it. Yes. This And finally, Nikosi, what does it mean to you to be Black in business? Oh, what does it mean to me to be black in business? Oh my gosh. So many things. <laughs> so many things. Um, you know, I, I've had to go through my own, um, inner work mm -hmm. in order to be visible. Um, because I don't take it lightly that I'm a unicorn mm -hmm. and I don't want to be a unicorn. And so if I don't want to be a, uni a unicorn, I have a responsibility to show my face, to share my journey, to um, do everything that I can to show others what is possible mm -hmm. for them. And I personally believe that Black excellence is like the minimum standard, I know that when we actually allow ourselves to, um, to envision and imagine that, you know what, it is, it is possible for me to right. be, a, a, you know, a seven figure or an eight figure or a billion dollar a year business owner. And the more that we see those examples, the more that we begin to believe that it's possible for us. Mm -hmm. And belief is the first step, right? Like faith is the first step. So beautiful. I always love when people answer that question because I always feel it and I love it. I love it. 
This has been amazing and I'm pretty sure people are going to want to know how can they support you, find you, and connect with you. I know you mentioned that you have a book coming out in the future. So where can people find you and stay connected with you to hear about those updates? Yeah. So the best place uh, right now is Instagram and I will be also uh, reviving my YouTube channel, The Royal Shaman. Okay. And so those are the the primary places. Um, you can also um, take my consciousness quiz on my website at theroyalshaman.com. Um, I have mm-hmm. a free quiz there that will help you to um, uncover your level of consciousness and give you um, tips and strategies for how you can expand your consciousness and step into more alignment. And when you do that, you'll be a part of my email list and get those updates when the book comes out, hopefully early next year. Yay. Early congrats. And I'm so glad we were one of the ones to hear it first. So congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you so, so much for being on the show. And I'm so happy that you listened to yourself and got over the fear and stepped out and made yourself visible so that you were able to, we were able to find you. So thank you so much for the work that you do. And thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. mentioned that you have a book coming out in the future. So where can people find you and stay connected with you to hear about those updates? Yeah. So the best place uh, right now is Instagram and I will be also uh, reviving my YouTube channel, The Royal Shaman. Okay. And so those are the the primary places. Um, you can also um, take my consciousness quiz on my website at theroyalshaman.com. Um, I have mm-hmm. a free quiz there that will help you to Um, uncover your level of consciousness and give you um, tips and strategies for how you can expand your consciousness and step into more alignment. And when you do that, you'll be a part of my email list and get those updates when the book comes out, hopefully early next year. Yay. Early congrats. And I'm so glad we were one of the ones to hear it first. So congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you so, so much for being on the show. And I'm so happy that you listened to yourself and got over the fear and stepped out and made yourself visible so that you were able to, we were able to find you. So thank you so much for the work that you do. And thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. I got so much value from this conversation and I hope that you did as well. I love that Makosi shared how to practice just being and how she drove home the importance of alignment by making it clear that burnout is a result of being misaligned. So make sure that you are implementing the things that were shared in this conversation so that you are making the impact that you are meant to make. Makosi also mentioned that you can't do this alone or on your own because you can't see yourself. So be sure to check out how you can connect with Makosi and the resources she mentioned at blacktobusiness.com forward slash 108. Until next week, same time, same place.